Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Animated Night in the Dojo. Today's featured show, Kite Man, Hell Yeah, Season 1. Uh, yep, Kite Man, Hell Yeah, Season 1, Episode 6. Welcome back to the Dojo, I'm Ryu. That's age, we're back for more Animated Night in the Dojo. Well, we got Kite Man's mom back. Bane did a thing, he scored a point. Arguably the greatest uh, scoreboard of all time. Golden Fighter's <laughs> mom. Yeah, would I say Bane's mom? I am out of it. You said Kite Man's mom. Kite Man's so, mom, yeah. We still haven't seen her yet. Yeah, we still haven't seen her. We haven't seen Kite Man's mom since the Harley Quinn series. Uh, yeah, long, long day yesterday. Just really dumb, long last 30 some odd hours of really, really poor infrastructure in my town that I learned about. Yeah, so don't really want to go into that because it was stupid. Oh, I apologize. Yes, we got Golden Glider's mom out of the pit. And she's still, after all these years, appar apparently away from her uh, children. Apparently, you know, based on that little stinger there at the end, uh, he doesn't want anything to do with them still because, yeah. <laughs> so um, it might have been better if she had died at this point, for all we know. Once again, we're still we're still in that nebulous point of uh, we don't actually know if the past was changed because the end result was still the same potentially. Like because the whole thing is the end result of the time travel was still that they grew up parentless under the impression that the mother was dead. Right. So it's entirely possible that this was just always what happened. Yep. The only like change to the past that actually definitely happened was just the whole thing of like Bane showing up in the picture. So as it stands, uh, we have that going on. The whole thing with what, what, what I'm so out of it right now. I apologize. Uh, oh yeah, Queen of Fables. The thing I, I, I called with her and Double, like being on the same body at some point this season, happened at midpoint of the season. So uh, maybe they they were just like, yeah, we, we'll just get this done, and this will be how they are for the rest of the season because. We just want to get it over with. <laughs> it's either going to be a temporary gag or that's just them establishing the status quo early for Queen of Fables going forward. Right. So there's that. Uh, there's still the stuff with Noonan because he brought up some other stuff last episode as well. I don't know if we're going to get another Jeremy sighting, but there's a guy too evil for hell out there. <laughs> Think about that for a second. And Malice had her first feeling. How about that? Ch chances are, with the way Hell works in... I'm more familiar with Hell in Marvel than Hell in DC. But from what I know of Hell in DC, the way it tends to work, I wouldn't be surprised if that's more or less just a story he made up. And that he just has like some sort of regeneration factor. Yeah, very well could be. This definitely seems like the kind of guy that just wants to, you know, make himself look good with stories that are not true. He's one of those guys. He had that character archetype. We all know who we're talking about here. But what else? Oh, yeah, the Immortal Health Inspector. Maybe we'll see him in the future as well. <laughs> so as it stands... Bunch of stuff is going on. Last week was a very complete episode. We also got Helen, uh, the uh, CEO, owner, whatever she is, of Villigans. She's probably going to be the, the biggest antagonist for the rest of this. So there's that. I assume at some point we're going to get back to the anti-life equation. I'm going to keep bringing it up because it's kind of a big deal, Tom. So yeah. <laughs> just let's not forget the dark side stuff. So... Um, Based on the, the title of this episode, it's going to be Glider's mom stuff. Oh, yeah, However we, that we, turns out. We need to finish the trilogy that Bane's not involved in. Yeah, so we, we need to get that done. So, um, Again, very complete episode last week with everything. Comedy, story writing, all that stuff. Uh, Kite Man and Bane are now becoming actual friends. Uh, so there's that. Um, but... Plenty of stuff going on. I'm enjoying this. It's, you know, 
just as good as the Harley Quinn show, as far as I'm concerned, especially if you're more of a, if you are more of a fan of Kite Man, just in general. So either way, um, I'm having fun with this. So let's kick off the second half of the season here, because once again, this is a 10 episode season. So we are halfway there. So let's go ahead, push some buttons and see what happens here. So here goes Hunt. So she's distant. Boo fucking who? I would have given my left nut to avoid my mom back in the day. I thought you lost your left nut in the war. I lost my right nut in the war, so I know <coughs> what I'm giving up. Lighter, your mom just needs time to get to know you. Pretty soon she'll love you the way I love you. I mean, maybe not exactly the way I love you. Well, I mean, almost, <coughs> but just it was with less time and hands and, and the penis, probably. Yeah, Chuck! I get your point. I saw this girl Beatrice at the mall with her mom. They had this whole day together where they got their ears pierced and did glamour shots together. That sounds nice. I wanted to gouge Beatrice's eyes out. Put that bump back on her Greek nose. Babe, that sounds like <coughs> a perfect mother-daughter day. And so you have some space. I won't be coming. Oh, I'll be coming. You'll be dead. And speaking of mom. She's like an angel wrapped in prosciutto. Like a date. Ooh, that's a good opener to ask for a date. I wish Mo would shut the fuck up so I could make my move on Becca. The fuck did you just say? <laughs> oh, he just said it out loud is what he did. <laughs> Damn you, eternal monologue! <laughs> Are we getting out of here or what? Yeah! You know, I have some thoughts on what we could do for our mother-daughter day. <laughs> just like the movie. Not like the movie. Whoa. All right, that... That even classified as a movie. Nothing crazy specific. Just did someone leave this detailed itinerary in the stock room? Not me. 11 a.m. Get ears pierced. Ask why she never called. Oh, you know, maybe that's uh, that's probably that other girl. 1:30 p.m. <clears throat> glamour shots. Ask if she also has heavy period flow. Y you know, Malice, I'm sure whoever's that is wanted it to be private. JBH, Rebecca is way out of your league. JBH, Glider is out of yours. Oh. JB. Fucking H, will you two knock it off? Whoa. Face it, Bane, it ain't gonna happen with Rebecca. Face it, I would rather die! You're not gonna die. You're gonna get over it. How do you get over abroad? You get under another one. Oh. And you? You want a power? Then stop being a pussy and get one. Everyone knows, you pierce for the boyfriend you want, not the boyfriend you have. Wait, what do you mean my next boyfriend? Oh my god, look at these! Malice, don't you think they would look great on me? to get them. You're not! Twinsies! <laughs> if anybody's going to make a trashy life-altering decision with my mom today that could possibly get infected, it is going to be me! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm so surprised you called. I mean, I haven't heard from you since Valentine's Day. I yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> considering that I fucked your entire apartment building. Oh, that. <laughs> it's only a building. I'm just glad to hear there isn't another woman. Another woman! Uh oh, perhaps she knows about Becca. Nonsense, Bane. There is no way she could know the secrets of your soul or your innermost. Except for your monologue out loud again. Calamari will tear through my colon like this woman does through my heart. Aw, Bane, that's so sweet. Damn you, inner monologue. Wait, which part of that did you hear? I've never been out to dinner with a guy that didn't end with me putting a cigarette out in his asshole. But you. You see me as so much more than that. I... I do. You're the real deal, Bane. I'm not surprised by this. Yeah. I'll take whatever she has. I don't need anything with too much pizzazz. Hey, hey, look what I did there. And I don't even care. Uh, my biggest life, thank you, jackass. I'll never make it through Helen Villigan's tower. And even if you do, I doubt she'll give you power. That's why you're here. How did you know that? Because I know everything through your search history. You searched how to get a power, then rephrased it six different ways. Power, how to get. Free powers, how to download powers. Then you got distracted reading the Wikipedia for Austin powers. Do I make you horny, baby? <laughs> I'm, I'm, no, I'm sorry. You must think I'm a joke. I think you're tired of being the joke. Sandy, <clears throat> may I have this dance? Uh, no. Oh, uh, oh. I mean, hell yeah. Is that really the origin of that? Because really? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
saying goodbye to you is the hardest thing I have ever had to do. Ah! <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> Take it outside. <laughs> Wow, just like a cat. What up, fuckers? BM? Hey, guys, a bowel movement just entered. That's what your mom said last night. Now, less talky, more pory. Hold on a second. You got a power? Oh, my God, you got the douche power. And this is a <laughs> yeah. free establishment. Fellas, yep. get him out of here. Bip, bap, boom. Hey. Hey, nerd. Whoopa. My lunch money. <laughs> Boss, are you sure he's the right guy for the job? He's kind of a douche. He's absolutely perfect. And this was the day Golden Glider's life just completely fell off the rails. Just entirely, that's the end of the series. Imagine if that's how it ended. That would be like the biggest douche move ever. <laughs> this went in a completely different direction than I expected. I expected the, the mother-daughter stuff to go pretty yeah. much like this. The malice factor was hilarious, as was the other mother-daughter combo going into a piercing shop with, like, an eight-year-old daughter. and that That's dubious, but it's Gotham in this universe, so are we surprised by that? Not really. Uh, yeah, I mean, people can get their ears pierced pretty young. I suppose, yeah. Doesn't necessarily... it Because you're going to get a piercing doesn't necessarily mean you're going to, um, you know, get your nipples pierced. <laughs> but uh yeah that that pretty much went uh exactly how i expected it to go not well we we've seen relation we we have all probably seen relationships like this where it was what it was but for golden glider she has the option to send her mom back in time so now she's back in the 80s as you know somebody in her you know late 50s as opposed to her like you know late 20s so, yeah, um, I guess that might be the end of that because it looks like Bane chose what's her name from the Valentine's Day episode that they just Betty, did, yeah, Betty, that they just never went back to and saved all the Valentine's Day side stuff for this right here, which brilliant because <laughs> yeah. the second. I saw her, I was just like, I didn't say it, and I should have, but I was just, so Kite Man's going to go see Etrigan, right? I didn't expect the Villigans to take over his, like, because Etrigan ha was running, like, uh, one of those, like, old-timey, uh, what do you even want to call those? Like, potion shops, kind of? He uh, was, yes, he, he was running, basically, an alchemist shop, yeah. but then he got bought out by Villigans, and now he's a pharmacy. yeah. So, <laughs> it's uh, not looking great for him, but, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> props to them for bringing the uh, Valentine's Day stuff back into this, because that was a great special episode for what it was. And, you know, it didn't really involve Kite Man all that much. We see him in gold. I think, to be fair, we do see him in this, uh, like, this version of Golden Glider, like, flying, like, just as, like, a sidebar kind of thing. Uh, so that might have been them, like, revealing her, like, official model, because the first time we see her, she's in, like, they were at, like, the Grammys or Oscars for villains, and they were all, like, you know, in formal wear, and she had, like, hair mm -hmm. extensions. But, uh, yeah. So, them circling back around to, uh, the Valentine's Day stuff, uh, and that frame, of course. Brilliant. Um, was great. So, why not? Though, based on the timeline, doesn't Bane get, like, kind of an obsession with Nora at some point? So, how are they going to do that? <laughs> yeah, that was... It was either late season three or during season four. Which just take place before season four. Yeah. 
I don't remember exactly. Yeah, because what. Bane goes on his pasta thing in season four, and like when Harley and Ivy come back from their uh, time traveling, Bane has mm -hmm. just gotten back from Italy, and he's trying to like impress Nora with his pasta making, and she doesn't yeah, care so about it, pasta it, anymore at that point. <laughs> yeah, it was season four then, because yeah, that was the whole thing of like he, the reason he went on his pasta quest was because uh Nora was trying to get him to fix her pasta maker. Yeah. So. And he couldn't get any uh he couldn't get the replacement part from the company or whatever, so he went all the way out to Italy and ended up becoming the pasta maker instead. Yep. So, which what was it? The woman he learned from was the sister of the person who did Mamma Mia's. <laughs> So everything is is connected, right? So it'll be interesting to see if, like, does this mean this doesn't work out? Or are they kind of like retconning that? Who knows? We'll we'll just have to see. But uh, well, yeah, we know he is like a crush on Nora, but we don't know like nothing happens from it because she ends up like flirting with Cat and Cole the whole bunch, and wants nothing to do with Bane because like it's always once it's like usual it's one sided from Bane. Yeah. Uh, but we don't ever in season four we don't ever hear him mention Betty again yeah so we'll just have to see what's up with that um if that continues I don't like if I'm pretty sure season five of Harley got greenlit pretty sure it's like 90 percent sure I'd have to check that but um yeah I mean they they are really arguably Bane has just as much screen time in this show as Kite Man and Glider do. Yeah. Like, it's it's not making really... Up for, <laughs> making up for the fact that he really wasn't around very much in 3 and 4. Yeah. Like, and, the only thing he really had that happened was the pasta quest. Yeah. And as far as we're concerned, you know, he is arguably one of the better characters in this entire se series. Like, this Harley-verse. And... <laughs> Well, I, I'm totally fine with him being like the third main character of this series, um, which is totally fine, obviously. I mean, we have some of the other side stuff going on, but uh, yeah, he he is definitely the third main character of this show, because if you look at screen time, it's arguable whether he even has more screen time than freaking Kite Man and Glider do at this point. Be like, if you take out the the first episode where he's like not fully part of it yet he has the majority of the screen time you know what i mean so it's it's pretty impressive are, are we sure we shouldn't be calling this bane hell yeah <laughs> which random side thing on that did we get the origin of why kite man says hell yeah in this episode was that what that was because it's so throwaway and random. <laughs> I thought it'd have, like, some sort of, like, random nonsensical meaning for him, but it was, what, his, like, prom date saying it? <laughs> it's so weird. So, yeah. Uh, whatever. We got full-on Kite Man backstory with his kite, though, to be fair... There was an episode in Harley Quinn where they were looking for his help and he had an entire like setup of putting together multiple kites because kites they're kites they like implode in on themselves all the time and this is Gotham you know what I mean <laughs> there is no generally, way that this is his original kite <laughs> yeah generally speaking kites are just made of paper sometimes plastic yeah well, most modern kites these days are usually made of plastic, but kites originally were made of paper, and some are still. Right. So, yeah, I... It's, it's kind of weird with this, but that is what it is. Also, his prom date looks vaguely familiar. I don't remember where I've seen her character model before. Obviously, somewhere in Harley Quinn. I just don't remember where. Yeah, I don't know. It was like Judy or something like that. Yeah. So might have to look into that one at some point. But 
we all know how this series likes to connect uh, random stuff out of nowhere, so we'll just have to see. But uh, yeah, once again, the mother-daughter stuff, unsurprising, but I guess she has already been written off because she's now back in time. That Glider literally flushed her problem down the toilet, technically. <laughs> So that's where we're potentially going to get, like, serious, timey-wimey nonsense is the fact that Rebecca is now stuck in the past. Right, and her past self should still be there, so we all know that the rules of time travel and yourself and whatnot are always different, so it'll be interesting to see if they even address that. So, who knows? So we'll put a pin in that for a minute. Um, the one thing with double here, I didn't, I didn't even bring this up as an option, but I, I totally was just like, they're going to end up doing it, aren't they? And yeah, so that happened. Also, the one thing that I did notice that I didn't notice before was the, that her side of the body, like that whole side of the body seems to be decaying, decaying yeah. because like when they showed like them fighting, it was like, uh, the, her, the left hand was very, you know, decayed. So... What's up with this guy's body? <laughs> well, so he it's Siamese twins, so without the brain to actually control the left side of the body, it's going to atrophy. Yeah, I suppose. So, yeah, uh that that's unsurprising. So we got they're they're keeping this like side story going on. We haven't gotten a lot of Kevin, the um kindergarten teacher guy. Uh no, it was like I'll say it was Gus. Yeah, Gus, was, yeah, was, Gus. G. It was like... Yeah. He's either... I'm pretty sure it was Gus, but it was either like Gus or Greg, but it was like Gus the Goon or whatever, because the whole thing was it was double G. Yeah, yeah. So, we'll just have to... I assume we'll be getting more of him at some point, um, but, you know, they're, they're doing something with every side character here, but once again, uh, if Bane is the one that gets the majority of the highlight, that's totally fine with me, but... Uh, yeah, we just usually, you know, Noonan has a bunch of stuff going on in the background. I mean, hell, he's tending the bar again for free, I guess. He's just doing it. <laughs> so that's going on. We also have his weird whatever is going on with him kind of deal because I know bartenders are known for, like, having a bunch of information and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, there's something going on with him. Absolutely. So, yeah. Also, I'm sending him to Etrigan to get a power. Like I, I mentioned in the episode, there's a lot of ways to get powers in this universe. Yep. Etrigan is probably just like one of the easiest methods. Yeah. But as it stands, what else did we learn in this episode? Apparently, shifting someone's testosterone level into the max is apparently giving them a the power over being a douche. Being a douche is a superpower. Congratulations, you've won. <laughs> so, I don't know. Uh, it just really well, seemed the like... Is, so the thing is, a power is inherently uh, tied to who you are in a lot of DC. So, like, getting a power will typically change your personality, plus also the fact that uh, Helen was using science to do it, in particular, meant she was fucking with his anatomy, yeah. and therefore physiology. Uh, but yes, she did, get, in fact, give him a power. Her, her power is to be able to telepathically bully people. Right. <laughs> Which, um, I, I thought I saw this, but since I landed on the frame and got really lucky here, I thought I saw this right here. And as we can see, on the left side, we've got arrogance, confidence, and douchiness. Absolutely. You have to hyphenate it. It's very important. <laughs> And of course, the contrast to kindness apparently is confirmed to be douchiness. Though I'm not sure if love contrasts to confidence, but you know, that is what it is. This is, you know, 
the the, the right side is everything Kite Man was, and the left side is everything that he became. So <laughs> you got all his attributes fortunately respect. Yeah. So that is what it is. Um, we got left on that, so it'll be interesting to see what comes of that, uh, especially now that uh, it appears that uh, Glider's, all of her relationships are just in shambles as it stands right now. Kite Man has burned like every bridge in Noonan's because Noonan, even though he doesn't own the bar anymore, is again tending bar and in charge of it technically at, at as we speak. And it is a quote, douche free zone. That was like, I guess, a major rule for his bar. So every bar owner out there, just put that on a sign somewhere. and Maybe your bar will turn out better. <laughs> but yeah, as it stands, it'll be uh, interesting to see what Helen is trying to do with this. I don't know why she needs Kite Man for this, but. Well, she had some form of plan based on what happened in the pit. So presumably this is some form of continuation of that. But it's very clear that she's deliberately pulling something with Kite Man. Like, the fact that he literally had no effort getting into her place. Like, she clearly was just basically letting him through, but making him think that he was getting there on his own. Right. So, I'm all for uh, non-explained devious plans. Why not? It could be any myriad of things, and that's kind of fun. So, uh, we'll definitely be interested to see what Helen is up to with this. So, yeah. As it stands right now, uh, our beloved Kite Man has now become a major douche. <laughs> so. Major douche canoe. Exactly. But other than that, you know, I I'm glad they brought back some of the Valentine's Day stuff. Always nice to see Etrigan, which was a ridiculous pull for the Valentine's Day episode as it stands, but he is technically established in this universe as a thing. He's a DC character. Um, still kind of a big pull, but still. Um, and then we got Betty back from, you know, Bane's whole escapades through the Valentine's Day episode, so that's cool. It'll be interesting to see what they do with that relationship if they're trying to kind of, like, retcon, you know, that whole thing, whatever. Um, if it doesn't work out, whatever, because we all know Bane can't be happy. That's just a pain thing. So. Either way, uh, another reasonable episode. Uh, feel bad for Glider, but she'll figure something out, I'm sure. And at some point, I'm sure we'll get uh, our good old Kite Man back. So, however that turns yeah. out. Yeah, I imagine next episode will probably basically just be Glider coming downstairs going, what the fuck, and Newton explaining the whole thing of like Rebecca putting the idea of getting a power into his head and him sending her and him sending Kite Man to Etrigan. Right. Which will then lead her to Helen and make her immediately figure out like, oh, something's clearly up here. Yep. And then she'll probably end up having to uh freaking wouldn't you say they reconcile because it wasn't really their problem, but freaking basically pull malice along to go actually do something about how about thwarting whatever helen's plan is yeah i mean at the end of the day malice really didn't do anything wrong it was just kind of malice being malice <laughs> so that that is what it is but uh yeah um well, 180 Kite Man, it'll be interesting to see how long that lasts. But once again, don't forget the anti-life equation and dark side. Whether that is... Yeah. It, it, it'll be interesting to see if that's just like a thing. Because if they don't get to that this season, they got to get to it at some point because they got David Keith to do freaking dark side. <laughs> yeah, which I, I imagine that this is basically the diversion of like... Kite Man tried to get a power. He's gonna get a. He gets the really shit power from Helen. That is just her basically making a power grab. But he will actually get a real power eventually from Darkseid. Yep. 
because uh, as far as I remember, we did not see Kite Man in season four of Harley, so they very well could work that in for a season five thing after this season. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, either way, I'm enjoying it. I, I personally am enjoying all, all the Bane. Absolutely. I think he is a, a great uh, spotlight character for everything that he's done in this just universe as a whole. So I'm I'm glad to see more Bane. It might not be everybody's cup of tea, but I am having fun with it. But uh, yeah, so anyway, douchiness aside, you got anything else, Age? The only things I can really think of at this point is for a more long-term thing, like I said, Kite Man probably will still end up getting a power, either from Dark Side or from the Anti-Life Equation itself. But I imagine whether Darkseid gets the anti-life equation or not, it's going to more or less come to light that Lex is the one who's been keeping it from him, and that is going to kind of play into the whole thing of uh, freaking his uncle helping uh, Ivy oust Lex in season four. Right. Yeah. So anyway, it's it'll be it, it will be also happen. interesting. Hmm? So basically, that's kind of like a way to get back at him. Oh, yeah. And as far as we know, Steppenwolf is a pretty big deal across the board, usually. Yeah. So. But yeah, it will be interesting to see if they kind of like try to interweave these two series together. Kind of like, uh, I think I mentioned this before, but they kind of did this, um, and multiple other shows have done this, but uh, uh, one of the ones that I think did, did pretty well was back in the late 90s, early 2000s, was when Buffy the Vampire Slayer became a big thing and Angel got his own spinoff. If you wanted the whole story for that, those two series, you had to kind of alternate seasons for the entirety of that universe to make any sense. But it still uh, was a, a good way to portray that, uh, that franchise. So it'll be interesting to see if that's what they're doing with Kite Man and Harley is just kind of like uh, doing the branch off series with Kite Man but uh, everything is still canon in both series, obviously. So, um, you know, but with the success of Harley, and obviously uh, from what I've seen, uh, the show uh, Kite Man has been pretty damn well received as well. So we'll probably be seeing uh, more Kite Man in the future if, uh, you know, it gets greenlit for another season or whatever. So anyway. In general, uh, DC's villain shows have been... Uh being really successful lately, so they're probably going to be willing to put more effort into them. Like, the only villain show that I know of that they've done recently, like, show, not in, like, the movie, is obviously the Joker movie failed. But, like, show-wise, it's villain-oriented. It's just the... From what I know, the... The Suicide Squad Isekai was considered to be pretty meh. Like, not necessarily bad, just pretty mediocre. But, anyway... We'll, uh, we'll leave you on Kite Man's new stats and uh, just have to wait till next week to see uh, what the hell uh, Captain Douche Canoe, as he is now known, uh, will continue to do. So, yeah, bunch of stuff on the table. Definitely getting interesting. Um, obviously, there's probably going to be more Bane because that's just how it is. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if we get any more of the uh, side character nonsense as well, like Gus, that kind of stuff. And... I guess we have to give a special shout out to Six Pack for referring to hardcore porn as movies. Yeah, that was a thing. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube beyond how you're watching, we always appreciate you stopping by and hanging with us in the dojo for more animated, animated night in the dojo. This was Kite Man, hell yeah, season one, episode six. So a good morning, evening, afternoon, whatever it is for you. Have a good one. See you next time. Hey everyone. Victoria here. If you enjoyed the video, please consider pushing those like and subscribe buttons. Your support is greatly appreciated. Thanks again for your time, and we hope to see you again in the future.